Ну это склад был. Домой бегите, куда вы пришли к тебе? Она бы не ходите туда. Заходите, вот только где выходили. Никто не там делает. An official close to Vladimir Putin has tasked Russian scientists to find anti-aging remedies for the president, the Times publication reported. Vladimir Putin who will turn 72 in October, is known to be obsessed with anti-aging remedies. According to the Times, the Russian Ministry of Health has told local research institutes to report immediately on their anti-aging methods, including tackling cognitive and sensory disorders, cellular aging and osteoporosis and boosting immune systems. We were tasked to urgently send all our developments, and the letter arrived, let's say, today, but everything had to be sent yesterday, Russian Medusa website quoted one of the researchers as saying. It should be noted that many senior officials in the Russian government are around the same age as Putin. The average life expectancy for men in Russia is around 67. Тут просто такая проблема. Стали выбивать окна. По-моему, колесо загорелось или провод перегорел. Точно не знаю. Alexander Kovalenko, a Ukrainian military expert, believes that terrorizing the civilian population is a part of Russia's warfare strategy. He shared this opinion on his Telegram channel. Terrorizing the civilian population is a normal state of affairs in Russia, Kovalenko stated. He noted that recently, Russian forces have conducted a series of strikes targeting exclusively civilian objects in Ukraine. These attacks began with Kharkiv, including the use of 9M723 ballistic missiles and continued with strikes on Sumy, where a center for social and psychological rehabilitation of children was destroyed, followed by strikes on Kyiv. Not a single military facility was hit, only civilian targets. Particularly noteworthy is the strike on the Sumy center for social and psychological rehabilitation of children. How sick and depraved do you have to be to target such an institution? A decision-making center, he added. According to Kovalenko, the use of terror against civilians has long been a part of Russia's warfare strategy. He drew parallels to the Soviet Union's tactics, stating that terrorizing the civilian population was a tactical and strategic element of Soviet warfare. This involved the targeted destruction of civilian infrastructure and the killing of civilians to spread panic and create chaos, applying moral and psychological pressure on authorities to compel early surrender. This concept included elements of war crimes which could well be classified as genocide, Kovalenko noted. He cited historical examples including the Soviet Union's Afghan campaign from 1979 to 1989, where estimates of civilian casualties range from 700,000 to 2 million. During the Chechen wars, civilian casualties were similarly high, with estimates ranging from 400,000 to 120,000 in the First Chechen War and 50,000 to 200,000 in the Second Chechen War. 
Kovalenko also referenced the five-day war in Georgia and the Russian campaign in Syria, both marked by attacks on civilian targets such as schools, hospitals and residential neighborhoods. The strikes on Ukrainian border towns and villages are not acts of revenge, but are driven by a strict, systematic pragmatism dictated by a broader concept of warfare, he explained. Kovalenko argued that modern Russia's approach remains consistent with historical patterns of violence and terror aimed at intimidating and disrupting civilian populations in occupied territories. Modern Russia is no different from the USSR in its approach. Kovalenko concluded, emphasizing that the terrorizing of civilian populations continues to be an integral part of Russia's strategy.